So I'm speaking with Emmy-nominated composer Joey Newman, whose fantastic work can be heard in uh, some amazing TV series and films. Joey Newman continues his scoring on ABC's The Middle, which will be in its sixth season this fall. Joey is also behind the reality series Jim Henson's Creature Shop Challenge, as well as the acclaimed films like Any Day Now, In Between, and the documentary Showing Up. His newest project is the TV series The Mysteries of Laura. Uh, Joey, thanks so much for your time. It's great to chat again. Thank you, Kai. It's great to be here. So you have this new series coming up uh, this fall on NBC, The Mysteries of Laura, which stars uh, Deborah Messing and uh, Josh Lucas. What was your approach for this series? And, you know, how do you really kind of, as a composer, start at the very beginning of a TV series that is, you know, intended to run for, you know, many, many years to come? When we approach the music to Laura, her being a, a, a detective, but also a mom of twins, we've got some groove, we've got some comedy. It's basically more, the show I think is concentrating more on the dramedy factor than necessarily the procedural concept. It's got that for sure. But, you know, I think the idea was that it's, it's fun. She's hilarious because she's uh, she's not only um, a brilliant detective, but she's also got a crazed life as a mom and trying to balance everything, which is, of course, you know, what we all do anyway. So, um, I, we approach the music to, to be that. There's Certainly some, some darker moments, some more just some action moments, but I think the premise behind it all was always let's go into what is what is best suited for her. She's a little throwback herself, you know, and uh, she she sings and, you know, she's, she'll sing a rock tune, whatever. So we've, we've kind of gone in that just kind of good groove direction. And so, I mean, when you're starting on a series, are you even kind of envisioning where your music could possibly go, or are you just kind of staying in the moment and taking kind of each episode as it comes? Um, you know, we discussed things at the beginning about ideas of where to take it, um, and then things somewhat evolve. I think it, it's it's hard to, to say exactly at the beginning where it's going to go. Right, it, uh, that's yeah. the beauty of, of these pilots. They're just kind of all nuts. There's so many cooks in the kitchen, so, um, you know, the network, the studio might think one thing, and so it just it could change. But that's I think we, you know, we found the groove with that kind of feel, and I think we're kind of running with it, so... It should, uh, it, it'll just evolve over time as a cohesive line. Right, right. And now you yeah. also you also have a, a TV show that's been on for many years now, The Middle, and has had an unbelievable run so far, and it's still going. Um, and not many shows going to last that long in today's television uh, landscape. What did, what do you think the uh, has been the appeal of The Middle, and how did it appeal to you as a composer from the beginning up till kind of now since you've been working on it? I think the show came in at the... Um at the right time. It came in uh, right when the economy was was tanking, and the show, by being about a, a struggling you know, Midwest family who has a, a, a deep bond, but also a great little sarcastic wit and everything, I think it just kind of appealed to that. We hadn't had a show on the air quite like that since Wonder Year. And, you know, there's a Wonder Year's component, there's a Roseanne component to it. Um, it just kind of just, it fit. And it also, I think, grew on people. We were one of those shows that just uh, the more word of mouth and the more we kind of just kind of subtly got into people's mindsets, the more I think people enjoyed it. It was a great escape. It's one of those shows where you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily think so hard and you can feel. Right. Um, it's not, it's not trying to be something more than it is, but it's a lot just right in there. And being on that from the beginning was great because I got a chance to develop the sound and the characters and, and, uh, you know, the, the music for all of that, including my favorite parts, which are kind of the end wrap ups, which I get to do, uh, just a kind of a sweet, uh, warm kind of Americana style thing, which is really fun. And um, it's it's been really amazing to watch all of that grow over the five six years now that we're we're doing this. So it's uh and it's also a great family of people there. So part of it is is that when you're on a show for this long, um, there's an amazing shorthand that everybody has, but you become a family behind the scenes too. Um, so everybody kind of just relates and reacts to the to the cast family as well as the behind the scenes family. Um, it's just really exciting. So, you know, shows, and Patricia Heaton has done, by being, doing Everybody Loves Raymond, and she's done long-term shows. Um, I think that's just the appeal. The appeal is that this is a kind of an everyday family that everybody can relate to. And the situations they're in are also loosely based on things that have actually happened to some of the writers or, you know, friends. So it's like, it's really kind of based somewhat in real life. (laughs) <laughs> which is awesome <laughs> that's great i know i love shows that really uh, i mean one of my favorite uh sitcoms uh for my kind of growing up was scrubs and i think it has a similar feel of appealing to you know people and relating to real life uh, scenarios and all that stuff and i, I think totally. and i think uh you know it's a 30 minute comedy kind of 
show, and uh, but you kind of get to, I think, do a little bit more musically than most sitcoms allow, right? Yeah, I, by it being a single cam uh, show, it, it has a feeling like you're more in like a, a normal television drama series in terms of the way it's shot, but it's it's uh, it, by versus like Friends or one of those shows mm-hmm. that are that are more multi camera. Right. So right. I'm not writing little transitions and actings and and, and act outs only. Certainly it has that, but uh, I'm, I actually get a real chance to score things. There's great flashback moments I get to score that are more you know, lengthy. Once in a while, we'll, we'll do a stylistic kind of, like there's an adaptation kind of concept of the show. Sometimes I've done bluegrass, sometimes I've done, uh, I do a Christmas show or things. You know, so you get a little bit of everything in there, but it, it's really fun. The, be- the best part is I get to adapt everything to sound. Right. And I think that's a challenge for a composer. It's always fun when you create a sound and then all, all of these other elements come in and you're able to kind of, you know, merge that into your, into your voice. And uh, that's a fun challenge. It's, it's you know, I, it's great when, when we get that. If, you know, I can put a little Disney-esque things in there for they go to Disney. You know, it's like whatever we can do, it's, it's, uh, it's probably the best part, especially after six years. <laughs> it's nice when <laughs> things change up a little bit right. or we get a new character in or something, you know. And, um, and, uh, and so beyond those two, you also do, um, a, you know, a reality competition show, Jim Henson's Creature Shop Challenge. And um, yeah. I t- and I talked to f- several composers who work on um, other shows, and I think it's always interesting. I, I mean, a lot of uh, these big competition shows sort of have iconic music moments, and I'm you know just from top of my head, I'm thinking, uh, you know, The Apprentice, you know, the boardroom scenes and all that. I mean, how do you go about creating music for a reality competition show? Is it kind of music uh, that is kind of reused throughout the season, same similar cues, or do you kind of score each uh, episode? is unique as its own or how does that work? Yeah, that show came about from um, my producer from little people who I'd worked with for so many years uh, was the executive producer on that show. And we've always done the same thing together. We've, we've created thematic music and uh, you know, moments and sounds and textures that are going to be the voice of the show. So that's the thing we've always concentrated on when it came to creature shop. That was what I concentrated on in particular. Um, I, I also got myself into this really incredible uh, collective called Common Compose that I work with my buddy Gregory Butler and Fred Curry on. And we, I've, appro- I'm, I've had a new way of kind of trying to approach some of these reality shows more with, uh, with some help in mind so that we can do the full slate of all these, all, you know, the difficulty of doing all the reality shows in terms mm-hmm. of schedules along with other things. So uh, the nice part is, is that we kind of complement each other uh, in, in how we write they're a little bit more electronic sometimes. I'm a little bit more orchestral sometimes. So it's so it was really great. So I take the kind of lead on working with my producer Joe Freed, and he's like, you know, we need this to sound Henson. We need this to sound, uh, you know, it's, it's got to have the, the tension, the undercurrents, all of these kind of moments. So what we concentrated on first and foremost was, you know, the main title. Let's let's make something. They had this great uh, sequence that was built for them for the creature shop thing, and that's what I started off with first. So I created that sound, what that was going to be, a little bit of the ancient, a little bit of the contemporary, and then we took it all from there. So we based much of it on uh, a specific motif that we were kind of, that I had, I had written that was kind of the way to, you know, that we kind of decided to be pulled from. So it, it's really done very similar in how I would do anything else. It's just uh, that is very particular. And like, here are the key scenes, like the 10, 12 key kind of moments we need that we know we want something very specific to the show's theme that we'll want to kind of get into, you know, I do a lot of morphing, a lot of working in that, and then it kind of creates itself. And you're right, there's definitely the, the moment of, of decision, and mm-hmm, then there's yeah. the end of the show, and then there's, you know, so there's, it definitely has all of those moments designed there. And they're all based on, you know, a, like any other thing, like like anything else, a big palette of, uh, of of music that is the true voice of what that show is going to be. Wow, that's that's I, I always find it interesting because I think uh, those kind of shows get to get dismissed by most people, and it, it's a lot of stuff going on to make those shows come together musically, at least. I mean, it's it's fascinating. There is one of the interesting things that we battled on that one too was that you know, sci-fi has Face Off, and right. there's a lot of rock and things in that. I think one of the um, you know we were trying to go more in the orchestral contemporary orchestral route. Uh, because certainly, an, uh, you know, audience can handle that too. They, they don't, they don't need to just have, you know, rock music in every competition show or some mm-hmm. sort of constant groove factor. That's just like a band playing. So I think that was a, one of the beautiful things that Brian Henson and, and all of them kind of won on with sci-fi was to be able to kind of go in that direction. And I think it worked great. And I, I think, you know, if season two here comes around, we'll just do more of it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So now moving from TV to uh, the feature world, you you did a a, a documentary, um, a very interesting documentary called Showing Up, and it's a series of interviews with some you know great known actors about the process of auditioning for roles. And um, how do you even approach scoring? Kind of, it's like a series of interviews. I mean, there's really is there other footage being used, or is it literally just interview after interview? How did you kind of approach uh, that documentary? I you know I. Spoke at length with the uh, the the director producer of that, who was a great actor, James Morrison. His wife his, his wife Riyadh is also an actress, and they basically did it together. Um, I'd worked with James on a, on a short film that he had done, uh, and he, he also played Bill Buchanan on Twenty Four. So he's, he's great. He's a great actor, also a great musician. And his feeling was uh, extremely uh, emotional about you know what the music was going to do, and also how much of it we needed. It's there's so much dialogue. Right. Um, we talked at length about, should we put something here? Should we put something here? Should we do this? Should we? And really, in the end, I think we made the right choice of basically putting a, sprinkling a little at the top, a little bit in the middle when things shift. And then really, the, the music comes at the end and the last moment where the real message of the whole thing is. And that's where we kind of ethereally left, went into this zone, went into the little subconscious, and then kind of came with the real end piece is over the credits. And it's, it's, it was an interesting kind of way to do it. But I, but I liked it because when I watched it as a whole, I kind of got involved in all of this dialogue. And there's a lot of it. So, you know, you, you're, you really need to concentrate on it. And even though it, it might be sometimes difficult to constantly hear somebody talk for an hour and a half, or, but it's, it actually kind of works. It, after what you're so interested in all these different stories, and they're all so fascinating. And then finally, when the music comes in, it just kind of gives this this whole thing a resolve and it, and, it, and it allows it to just you know deflate and let let us get into oh my gosh all the stuff i just saw now i can just kind of sit back and listen to you know the music kind of just resolves all of that it just lets you sit back and kind of absorb and so that was what our goal was on all of that and it was fun it was fun to, to work on that it was incredible to uh to actually just to listen to what these folks say because i don't i always say that a lot of the actors' world and audition world seem too far off from what we have to do. We're basically selling our product, which is ourselves as a composer, and our music. And, um, you know, the only difference is that I don't necessarily have to come in and get rejected because I'm a blonde versus a brunette or something like that. So, <laughs> right. But it's, uh, it's it was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was really interesting to see also what happened to it afterwards when he got it um, put into some school. So it's part of, you know, like it's in, it's in the library of some certain schools for educational purposes and play the SAG Foundation. Some of the actors came and spoke at some of the screenings, and it was really fascinating to listen to them. Wow. The stories are amazing. And, and the actors' audition is just a fascinating thing in life anyway. It is. And uh, I mean, you, yeah. mentioned, you mentioned a process for a composer. Are there any nerve-wracking experiences uh, from your career so far on, on your quest to try to get a project? I mean, is it is it does it ever come down to like, oh, you're going up against this composer and they you really have to fight for it? There's some stuff, sure. I mean, there's there's always moments where you really think you've got it in the bag and you've had either a great meeting or they're into your reel and all of a sudden you find out they've gone a totally different direction. Um, I, I, I think as a composer, you know, you have to learn very early on to let go of mm-hmm. uh, not taking things personally and to be able to allow your music to be rejected, torn apart. It's just the nature of this business. You know, we're 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 giving a, a product. We're we're doing a service. We're part of a team. It's um it's not just listen to me 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 me. So you really if I think if you approach it like you're a team member and you approach it like you're part of a crew, um you know part of the creative crew like the writer and the DP and all this. I think I think it's you can it's easier to let go of things and not take things so personally. Uh, you know it's harder if you're a songwriter maybe and you're you know writing things from your personal experience and right. you know, there's you know deep dark moments stuff stuff like that. But um. For me, the challenge is always achieving what the creator or the showrunner or the director, whoever it is, wants and putting my stamp on it and having myself go through my own personal challenges of how I can make the music interesting within this framework that we're working in, which is, you know, I'm, I am certainly, you know, confined by visual and also, you know, what all these other voices want in it, you know, so... Um, it, it's that's but that's the beautiful challenge of what we do as film composers and television composers is we're supporting drama with all of these other factors coming around externally as well. Absolutely, so it, it's a yeah. tough balance, but yeah, letting go that's the key in a lot of things. 
Let it go. Okay. I'll let it go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could start singing Frozen, but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to pay Disney royalties now. Um, <laughs> I, I also bumped into you just recently at the ASCAP Film and TV Awards. You know, you're one of the honored uh, composers that evening, and you, you're there with your daughter on the red carpet. What was like sharing a night like that with, you know, your family and all your peers like that? What did it mean to you as a composer? It, it was the best ASCAP night I've, I've ever had. Having her come with me as my date was awesome. Um it was a it was a real honor. I mean, it was it's I I think to be recognized, um, especially on a show that flew under the radar for so long, right. um, which is probably why we ultimately survived. Uh, you know, why the middle window syndication, why we're now in our sixth season, is because we grew on people so much they couldn't avoid us. You know, even <laughs> critics were just like, "It's just the great, the most underrated great show." Blah, blah, you know, which I really and we kind of liked that. In the end, we were kind of happy being that cool little underrated show. You know. Yeah. Um, as long as we keep going, that's that was great for all of us, and you know we're, we're making great stuff. But yes, going to the ASCAP thing was a lot of fun. It was uh, incredible uh, celebrating that and having my daughter uh, watch me go up and, and get the award and to be around friends and and uh, it was it was a great feeling. It was really 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 wonderful. Uh, it was yeah, it was a fun night. I, I enjoyed myself as well. And um, yeah, um, but uh, Joey, thanks so much. Uh, I'm out of questions, but uh, thanks so much for your time and uh, for speaking again. And it's always such a pleasure to chat with you. And congrats on all the new shows and the new pro uh, projects to come. So thank you so much. Kaya, thank you so much. It's always great talking to you too, man.